this is my website drsohel.net so you can also go to my website then you can have a look maybe you can download the the jdk java jdk from my site okay if you look at this side okay uh, so i already explained here how to set up the jdk but this is i think one year before but still you can get the idea how to install jdk java jdk and jre in windows operating system so i have one video here i'm not going to run the video but at least once you have time you can run the video so you can get the idea how to install java jdk and jre in your computer okay so the video is already there so i already given the video so later on you can have a look okay so how you can install the java jdk the jdk already i uploaded in my website i will show you and you can download from there okay so you can download you can run this one then you can set up the java jdk so you must have to set up the in that case the environmental variable then you can run your java command from anywhere in your computer that means any directory from any directory okay any drive any directory okay so you can see i just give you the idea later on you can just have a look of my videos okay all right now i go back to my site where you can get my jdk link okay so if you go to the teaching in my website so you can you can have a look here under the teaching i put the subject object oriented programming then i have given the two links one is the jdk one is the jre okay so before you start to run your code you must have to install this jdk and jre so now i go at the first lesson eh? remember first lesson first lab so i go to the first lab okay you look at the first code here okay class high public static void main string argument a for argument and then you display one message using the command we call system.out.println then after you compile you run it will give you the give you the output hello world okay so i'm going to copy this code you can use any text editor okay so i'm going to use here the notepad plus plus okay then i will copy this one already i copied but i will show you copy and paste here then the save the file remember java is very case sensitive you must have to remember the class name and the file name must be same if you look at here the class name is high so once you save this file you must have to use exactly the same high dot java so i'm going to save this file save as high dot java just i will show you how to save the file with the extension exactly the same with the class name okay i put the double quotation so that it will be the exactly the same name high dot java save to my directory under the op lab one okay save there already there so i just override this one okay now i go back to the command from how to go to the command from so from here the start then you can click on the right button of your mouse then you run then you put the command cmd so it will go to the command prompt because we are going to run from the most of the java code okay so i go there but but file is not here so i'm going to change this directory then the first command i'm going to use we call the dos command this operating system command cd change directory backslash then i'm going to enter so now we see that it goes back to the root directory of c okay now i'm going to find out my directory the name is oop how to find out the command is dir 
then I'm going to find out the file name is OOP. Directory name is OOP. So I am going to start with O. Star means after that it can be any character. Then dot again I put a star means it can be any extension. And now it will show you the all the directories and files with the first character O. Okay. So now you can see here I have two directories online course 2020 and another one is OOP. So now I'm going to I'm going to use the command cd change the directory to OOP. All right. So now I'm going to enter into OOP directory. Okay, you look at here C OOP. Now I'm going to see again whether my lab one directory is there or not. Yes. My lab one directory is there. So under this directory, I actually save the file. So I need to go to there also. Again, cd space lab one. All right. Okay, now I'm going to test my Java file is installed properly or not. How to check? So you need to put a command. We call that Java, Java. C. Then if you enter this command, so you can see Java C, then it will show you this out, output. So if you get this output, that means your Java is installed properly. That means JDK is properly installed and your path is set also properly. Otherwise, it will give you the error message. Okay, now I'm going to see the files under the lab one. What are the files I have? So just now I copy the file, we call the hi.java. Okay, now if you want to run Java code, the command is Java, Java C, that means Java compiler, then the file name hi.java. Okay, so now I'm going to run this one. It might give you that some error message, okay? So now you look at here, you got the error message, right? Look at the error message. You might be the first time you run, maybe you can get this error message because of I copy this file from the Word document, right? So Word document file. So there is a problem with the double quotation. You look at here, so double quotation, the format of the Word file and the text file is not the same. So I'm going back to the code again and then because of this you look at here the double quotation because i copy paste from the word file so we need to change this one again double quotation again you have to delete here double quotation now the format for this file is appropriate for the text editor so it's same again then we go back to the command prompt and then again I'm going to okay. I clear this one. CLS clear the screen first. Easier for me to run again. Java C, Java C, then high dot Java. Okay. So if there is no problem in the code, so it will give you no error message. Okay, that means it's compiled properly. So now what happened? Once we use the Java C command, that means Java compiler, what it will do? It will convert the high.java file to high.class file. So now have a look whether it's converted to high.class or not. So yes, we can see here the high.class file is created. So now you can get the output from this high.class file. So the command is Java, only Java, remember? Then the high, name of the class only. No need to put the extension class. Then it will show you the output. Okay, what is the output? Okay, hello world. Okay, now we go back to our code and see what actually it's supposed to show you the output. Okay, look at here. So the high class, public static void main string, A for arguments. Okay, then system.out.print line. Print line, it will display the output in the next line. The command here is a high 
it put the next line you get the output and what is the output you will get hello world you look at here hello world okay i think you understand this one very simple and very easy to understand 